So, this is take three of a mail call. At this point, I'm just going to do the mail call. Uncle Al, Die Bullfrog 79, kindly sent me the list of Hudson Bay Pilot Survival Emergency Kit for 1956. And thank you very, very much, Uncle Al. I really appreciate it. Uh, he gave me some information on it and weights and stuff, and it was all very interesting. Specifically, this was the basis for uh, the early American space program survival kits, uh, used up into and including Gemini, which was the uh, two-person rocket series. Uh, it was not used for Apollo and subsequent. Uh, he points out that Canadian and uh, Soviet survival kits were far superior uh, to American ones. Uh, not very patriotic, Uncle Al. I dare say it's true, though. Uh, one of the interesting things people don't know about me is I actually spent some of my youth uh, packing uh, lifeboat and survival kits for the Royal Air Force in uh, RAF Kinloss up in northern Scotland. So I kind of really like these kind of things, like these survival kits. So in 1956, they came up with this, and it was to do with the trade, the company's concern with pilots crashing and dying in Canada, in the, in the wilderness, and this is what they had in it. So I'm going to go through what they have and tell you what I think. And then at the end of the video, uh, if you want to tell me in the comments what you think, or you want to do a VR to this, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, but do mention Uncle Al, Die Bullfrog uh, 79. Tea bags, 28, purpose making tea. Absolutely, uh, but why have 28 tea bags? Um, 28 tea bags is a good amount. Now remember with tea bags, for those of you who are rich Americans, uh, tea bags can be squeezed and dried out uh, so they can be reused. And when I grew up in England, we always had a little ceramic pot, a uh, ceramic shelf next to uh, the teapot to put the tea bags in to reuse them. It doesn't taste as good, but it works. Vitamin pills, 50. Purpose making up for dietary deficiency. Absolutely disagree with that. Vitamin pills have no place at all in a short term or a medium term survival. Waste of space, replace them with glucose tablets or painkillers or whatever, anything. You're not going to run out of vitamins in a week or two. You're not going to run out of vitamins in a month or two. Beyond that, absolutely, and uh, going beyond the survival kit, uh, you really need to go to Costco or Equivalence and buy 365 adult multi-tablets and you want to buy a bottle of them every so often and store them and hope you never use them. That would be a really useful bit of kit uh, in a long, long-term survival situation. But short term, vitamin pills, come on. Pilot bread, 30 ounces, purpose is food. Totally agree with that, uh, except I would take more pilot bread than that. It's a great, great thing to have. Butter, wouldn't bother. I would use uh, olive oil. Uh, butter and lard and margarine to a large degree will melt and are going to be hard to uh, ration. Whereas a little bottle or two bottles of olive oil, very easy to ration. The purpose of this is flavouring on the pilot bread, but it's also... Fats, fats are critical. Strawberry jam. Two to one ratio pilot bread to strawberry jam. I would have less, no idea what that is. I would have less jam, but more of them. Oh, I'll have to stop it because I'll get a copyright strike. Be back. I'm trying to figure out the timing on the new camera. Um, do like this. About time I got one, I know, nobody could ever hear me. Now, Leslie uh, Kitty Cat does say that people not being able to hear everything I say is actually an advantage, so we'll see how that goes. Spam. Now, I don't use spam. Uh, Mr. Bear would prefer steak than spam, but spam's a really useful uh, source of concentrated fat, so I would have a small, few small tins of, of uh, spam and maybe um, sardines, mackerel fillets in, all, in olive oil. Condensed milk wouldn't use at all. Condensed milk, yeah, you get sweetening and all the rest of it and you use it for your tea and you put it on straight on top of pilot bread. Uh, it's going to be very hard to stop it from going off and it's really not worth it. Chocolate bars, absolutely, have loads of them. Um, they recommend later on dark chocolate, absolutely. Vegan chocolate's the way to go here, not milk chocolate. It won't melt as easy. And it points out uh, that you can break it and crumble it and put it in a little metal cup and put water in it, stir it, and you've got hot chocolate. Great morale booster. Now, they do recommend wooden matches 100. 
Now in this day and age, I wouldn't recommend matches. I'd recommend two to three Bic lighters, either or, or both. Um, I wouldn't recommend a ferro rod, they don't. Um, you want a fire to be lit. You don't want to be messing around. And as uh, Joe Primal correctly pointed out, in Canada uh, and other places, you light the fire. The problem then is keeping the fire lit. In the winter, you have to keep it lit all the time. You're going to freeze to death. And in the summer, you want to keep it lit most of the time for the smoke to stop mosquitoes eating you to death. So the focus of a lot of preppers is on lighting fires. They have fire kits and all of this stuff. Not dismissing fire kits, not dismissing the importance of being able to light a fire under multiple circumstances. But I think the survival benefit is more skewed than that. The survival benefit of fire is actually keeping a fire going that once you've obtained one. And I think a lot of people don't really focus on that. They'll have very complicated fire kits, but they won't have an aluminium screen to protect it from gushing, uh, gutting from the wind. Well, that's sort of an idea. A knife. Now, they recommend a multi-tool, a small Swiss, Swiss Army knife, multi-tool. Uh, I don't. I would go full tang and a folder. I will actually probably carry a few tools uh, in a plane because uh, to be able to remove panels uh, with screwdrivers and stuff like that, it's probably a great idea. Um, a small little Swiss Army multi-knife. Nah, eh, not for me. A whistle. Now, back in 1956, whistles probably were manual and probably had dry peas in them. Um, these days, the plastic, no movable parts. So one is none, two is one, etc., etc. All planes flying over Canada have life rafts and life preservers in them. They all will have whistles. So if you make a specific survival kit for flying or boating or hiking or driving a car, think about what other survival equipment's in there anyway and don't duplicate unnecessarily. A mirror. Don't like a mirror. I think it's a waste of time. Um, if you want to signal, use smoke. Uh, use a bear flare. There's bear bangers and also bear flares. And consider at night using chem lights. Uh, the only use for a chem light, in my opinion, is to break, tie a meter of paracord and spin it at night. Really great signal, both for the air and for the ground. Fish line, one. No, take two fish lines or three fish lines. In fact, take a small fishing rod. Um, that's going to be a critical thing in Canada. Fish is going to be critical to survival. Uh, fish hooks, four. Small to medium. Nah, take, take 20. You lose them so easily. I would also take a small gill net or two. I really would. And I would probably have a few tins of mackerel as well that I could use for eating and the oil and also for small amounts of startup bait. Uh, they recommend candles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light and fire survivalism. I get it, Uncle Lyle. Uh, again, I might take them. Again, I don't think it's that important. Kleenex, one. One small pack. No, take a bunch of Kleenex. They're very light, start fires, and grateful wiping your bum. Chapstick. Now, the purpose here is chapped lips. Mosquito bites and small cuts. Uh, one of the things people don't know, probably don't want to know, but I'll tell you, is one of the survival skills that you are taught um, in one of the branches of the Royal Air Force is to actually frequently in hot conditions uh, scoop out earwax and then apply that to your lips to prevent chapping. So you've got your own chapstick in your ear. You might not like that idea. Um, it works. Chapsticks are also good for fire starting as an accelerant. So yeah, that's what I think is a great list. I really like the list. Oh, Mr. Bear is now about to leave us. Hello, Mr. Bear. Um, good list. Now on the adverse side of the list, I'm going to shoot this video in one because I had some problems last time. Uh, rucksack, tarp, military poncho. Uh, totally disagree with that. And this is why. In this day and age in 2018, you can buy a hiking tent like a Hubba Hubba or similar. Um, and sleeping in a tent uh, that has mosquito control by its design is always going to be superior to using a tap and a military poncho in the wilds of Canada. Sorry, it's true. Now they also recommend a heavy blanket bedroll or a sleeping bag with bivy bag. Uh, in this day and age, uh, not a down, never use down. They're heavy and they get wet. And it's also cruel. Um, but an artificial sleeping bag with bivy bag is a great idea. A uh, cooking kit, absolutely, a metal tin will do, a little like rocket stove maybe, uh, the S bit, the easy bit, uh, and gas 
container kits, I would shy away from them in Canada. Wood's always going to be available. Use wood. They recommend one pair of underwear and two pairs of wool socks. No. I would recommend two to three pairs of underwear, including shorts as well, running shorts, and use them as underwear. It's going to be much more convenient than having a single extra pair. And the wool socks, I would use merino wool with uh, polyester in this day and age. Dry quicker, lighter weight, more comfortable. And I remember this was 1956. Jacket, M65 military type with liner. No. You need a, a jacket that's going to keep you warm down to minus 30 for large parts of the year up here. And in the summer, you need a mosquito jacket. Non negotiable. You need a mosquito jacket in the summer. Toiletry articles. One of these days, I'll do a video on this. I totally, totally don't see any point brushing your teeth, combing your hair, uh, flossing, or washing your armpits in a survival situation that's short term. Long term is a different matter. Short term, waste of space. Carry a f first aid kit, which isn't on this list. Flashlight and whetstone. Yes to the whetstone, very small one. Nice to be able to keep your axe and your knives sharp. Though remember with axes, you do not want an axe too sharp. Uh, bites in the wood. The flashlight, we'll get into that, I don't agree with it. The, the, the idea with the flashlight is, I, the only use for it would be signaling. And I would like to use a chem light for that. If I have a flashlight, it would be solar powered and hand cranked. And I would also get one and spend the extra money with a small radio in it. Uh, it probably won't survive the crash, but it might. And if you are able to hear a little radio um, in the wilds of Canada, it will help keep you grounded with reality. And that can be very important, especially if your survival goes into a month or two. And with the supplies here, there's no problem for that. Needle threads, buttons and medicines, etc. Yeah, small kits for those are a good idea. Uh, what it doesn't mention, and I will mention it again, and I keep mentioning this, and I keep mentioning it because it's my agenda, is have a small pair of scissors. Small scissors. Keep your toenails cut and short. Toenail issues are an absolute nightmare if you are having to do physical activity or in your survival situation. The one thing that is really hard to replace with a knife, I can bite my fingernails off, I can't reach my toenails. And you might not have a second person with you, and even if you did, they might be unwilling to chew your toenails off. Now the interesting one is the food. Uh, campus bread, dry bread, or rusk, or pancake a pound. Uh, if I knew I was going in a wild area, I would probably carry more than one pound of this. You can carry two or three pounds easily enough. It's going to make a big difference. I'd also carry rice as well, which is not included in here. Uh, one of the things I would recommend uh, people think about more closely are baby rusks, Farley's rusks, I believe they used to be called. The baby rusks are actually great. You can eat them dry, uh, help for teething. Um, you might break teeth. They'll help with that. Yeah, serious. Think about it. And you can also add water in with them and mix them up and have a nice kind of a porridge. And they're very light. Take bulk, but they're light. Cereal, uh, oats or grits in a plastic bag, eight ounces. Again, I would probably take two or three pounds of this. I think that's more is better, even though you have weight capacity issues in planes. I wouldn't take the powdered milk. I think it's a wasted space. Uh, I wouldn't take butter or margarine in a sealed container. Again, it'll go off when you open it very quickly. And if you can pour olive oil, it does the same thing. It's just fat. And why take fat um, that's from animals or is going to go rancid or melt easily or get flies in it? Use a little bowl and olive oil is perfect for that. Hard cheeses. I don't use cheese because I'm vegan. Uh, big agenda, big agenda. But I absolutely would take some hard cheese in a survival situation. Um, it's a great source of fats. Again, the fats are going to definitely outweigh any concerns I have with my diet or with concerns about health in terms of milk intake. Suggest so taking powdered or freeze-dried eggs. Yeah, I wouldn't bother. I, I would rather take a book on uh, birds or foraging with me, and I'd rather try and find eggs from turtles at certain times of the year or find uh, birds' eggs at certain times of the year. I don't use eggs anyway. I can do without eggs. Raisins or sultanas, large, large type, four ounces. I would take way more than that. It says dried fruit, four ounces, apricots, prunes, or cranberries in a plastic bag. Again, there's nothing wrong with that, except don't take prunes. The last thing you need in any survival situation is to fight 
constipation aggressively using prunes. For those of you who don't use prunes in your diet, one or two prunes will send you running to the toilet. Instead, take banana chips, uh, take dates, figs, variety, and a high energy, high glucose. It's good for you and high fiber to some extent. Sugar in a plastic bag. I'm never going to do that. But I probably would take maple syrup in a plastic bag, in a plastic bowl. I like maple syrup. In fact, in a survival situation, you might be inclined to take a couple of the plastic spigots and a little bit of plastic hose and a collapsible plastic bucket. If you know the time of year is before the spring uh, starts, you might be able to tap yourself some maple syrup. You can drink maple water. Uh, it's actually being sold to hippies now and hipsters. Perfectly good source of almost pure water with some sugar in, not much unless you boil it down. The dark chocolate we already mentioned, uh, just say coffee ground in a plastic bag, two ounces. I, would maybe take, I might take more than two ounces and uh, some tea bags. Again, that's a good idea. Three pounds of water is what's suggested. What isn't on the list? Well, what isn't on the list is a whole bunch of things. Um, definitely take 200 aqua tabs per person. The ability to have each person purify and drink half an hour later water up to 200 liters of it uh, without having to boil it, without having to process it, without having to particularly filter it, eat well. I mean, a micro towel is a good thing to have as well. Is absolutely a great idea in a survival situation in Canada. Uh, beaver fever, giardia, you really don't want them in a survival situation. And aquatabs work just great. And I would boil my water as fast as I could and as far as I felt able to set up to do that. Now, the other thing that this doesn't do, and I would like uh, your opinions, both on the list of what's on it, what's not on it, what do you think about it, but also what would you do? <laughs> It's Canada Day, up Canada Way, on the first day of July. And we're shouting hooray, up Canada Way, when the maple leaf flies high. When the silver jets from east to west go streaming through our sky. We'll be shouting hooray, up Canada Way, when the great...